Hey, three extra. Sorry, it's a little com inconvenient with the um, standardized testing going on tomorrow. So I just wanted to give you a heads up, maybe a head start on tomorrow's lesson called finite differences. We've been talking about arithmetic and geometric sequences. So um, those dealt with linear and exponential equations. But what if we have a different equation that's making a sequence? Like this one that's going negative 9, negative 8, negative 13, so on and so forth. It's not as constant as it is with arithmetics and geometrics. So we do have a process called finite differences to help us with that. The first thing we have to do in any finite difference problem is make the finite difference table. And what we do to make the table is find the differences of successive terms. Now, what's really tricky or sometimes we have to watch out for is that always take the next term minus the previous term. So in this case, a negative 8 minus a negative 9. Be careful that you do have to add these. So this difference, as you can see, is 1. And I keep going down the list here that if I take the negative 13 minus the negative 8, that becomes a negative 5, and then a negative 11. And you can be doing these while I do these. Negative 17, and a negative 23. And then a negative 29. Now, if you even look while I'm going through those, there should be a pattern forming. If there isn't, it's not a huge deal. Um, but with the type of function, it, it, it can find a pattern right off the bat. Now, if you don't get the same number in the finite differences in the first difference, you got to keep going. So in this case, um, I just keep going with these differences. I get a difference of negative 6, uh, negative 6, negative 6 negative 6 and negative 6. And that's what we're looking for. We want our differences to be the same. Now, to generalize this, if you get the differences all in the first difference, well, that should be pretty obvious that if they're both in the first difference, your equation is linear because you're just adding the same thing. Now, if they're in the second difference, then the type of function you're dealing with is quadratic. Now, we're going to have some eventually that if you get to the third difference and it's still not the same number yet, if it's the same number in the third difference, you're going to have a cubic equation. So in our case, since it was the same number in the second difference, this pattern right here, this sequence, will fall under a quadratic equation. So let's actually see how we can use knowing that it's a quadratic to find out what the equation then is actually going to be. So our general quadratic is an squared plus bn plus c. Now, what we're looking for then is what a, b, and c are. That there's some magic a, b's, and c's that will fit this sequence here. So what we're going to have to do is make a system of equations. Now, I'm going to go basic first to say, well, let's just see what happens when n is 1 to see what happens to this equation. So if I plug in n is 1, well, I'm going to do a times 1 squared plus b times 1 plus c. So to simplify this, when n equals 1, the equation is just 1a. I'll we'll just go a plus b plus c. But when I find this a, b, and c, I have to have it equal to something. So when n is 1, my table actually tells me what the actual outcome should be. When n is 1, the outcome of a, b, and c should be negative 8. Now, that's only one equation in three unknowns. So just to show you and kind of mix it up a little bit, you could do n equals 2 and n equals 3. That's fine, but I like to live life on the edge. So I'm going to use when n equals 5 just to see if you actually know how to make this system of equations. So that would be a times 5 squared plus b times 5 plus c which will give me a 25a plus a 5b plus a c. And that's going to equal, well, right here. When n equals 5, it says the outcome should be negative 64. And since we need as many equations as we have unknowns, let's do n equals 2. So I'm going to get a times 2 squared plus a times 2, oh, sorry, b times 2 plus c. So that's going to be a 4a plus 2b plus c. And when n equals 2, we should have a negative 13. So like I said, you can just go 1, 2, and 3. That's fine. But I went 1, 5, and 2. So I have three equations and three unknowns now. Now there's multiple ways that you can do this. You can do this algebraically. 
Maybe if you use a zero, that'd be a little more convenient. But you can solve this um, using elimination, substitution, and things like that. We're going to pick a little easier method or faster method from this, actually using matrices. So how we set up the matrices is we're going to make a coefficient matrix. Add a page here and go split screen. And we're going to use the blue, green, and red equations. So the first uh, matrix you're going to have is going to be your coefficient matrix. So you're going to take the coefficients of all those A, B's, and C's. Then you're going to have your variable matrix. All your variables are going to be in there. And then lastly, you're going to have your answer matrix. So what I'm going to do is take this blue equation and look at all the coefficients that I have for it. If you can see, my coefficients are 1 that's for the A, 1 for the B, 1 for the C. So it's going to go 1, 1, 1. Then I put the coefficients of the green equation, 25, 5, and 1. And then the red equation is 4, 2, and 1. And if you remember multi uh, multiplication of matrices, we always go multiply the rows by the columns and we add up those individual units. So I'm going to do 1 times whatever in the first spot. So to get a 1A, I gotta have that A. Ooh, well, blues. I guess red is fine. Because it doesn't matter the colors for this one. So I'm gonna get a 1A, 1B, and 1C. And actually, if you can see, I, if I do multiply these together, I'll have 1A plus 1B plus 1C, 25A plus 25B plus 1C. But then I gotta tell it what it's equal to. So if I have 1A plus 1B plus 1C, my answer matrix should say that that should equal negative 8. 25A plus 5B plus 1C should equal negative 64. So seeing color coding kind of helps to see that you got to get these in line. Whatever your N equals, this is when N equals 1, this is when N equals 5, you're getting those values from the table. And like I said, go 1, 2, and 3 and it'll stay a little more convenient. From here, we got to remember our matrix algebra to say, well, here's A, and matrix A, here's matrix X, some variable one, matrix equals matrix B, because I want to solve for the X. Now, matrix-wise, we can't divide by that matrix A, unfortunately, but we can actually make it uh, disappear, in quotations, from this side by taking the inverse. So if I take A inverse, on the left side of this matrix, that'll be the identity we get to just the X on the left side. But since I did it to the left side on, on this, matrix algebra says that I have to do it on the left side of this side. So X actually equals A inverse times matrix B. So let's see what happens when we actually do that in our calculator. Now, I've, I've pre-put these in, so I'm just going to show you kind of how to do this quickly. Here is matrix. Oh, maybe. So there's matrix. You can edit them over here. So I'm going to have a 3x3 three three matrix. And if you notice, I put in my coefficient matrix. 1, 1, 1, 25, 5, 1, 4, 2, 1. And then in matrix B... I put in my answer matrix, negative 8, negative 64, negative 13. So the algebra tells me to go matrix A. Oops, sorry. i got to get out of there first. Matrix A, just press enter. I notice the matrix button is the inverse. And then go matrix B. And we'll multiply those two together. And it goes, and it finds the coefficients, coefficients that you defined. So, this little x matrix is telling me, is that negative 3, 4, 9? Negative 3, 4, 9. So that becomes our A, B, and C. So we can plug these A, Bs, and Cs back into our general quadratic equation to say that what will make this sequence? Well, we'll use, well, I guess we'll use Y for this one. Uh, but I would probably use a subscript notation to say that this is formed by negative 3n squared plus my b is 4, 4n, 
plus. Right? If you want to check it, put it in your y equals, see if it makes this table. But I know I made it. It's going to work. So hopefully this helps. This is the very beginning of this uh, finite difference. Eventually, I'll probably make a video on recursives too. We're finding the recursive for quadratics. So hopefully this helps. Check this out before tomorrow. We have a good heads up or a good beginning before tomorrow's lesson. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys tomorrow.